In this lesson I'm going to teach you how you can make your own functions. Now in general a function is simply a block of code that you can jump to from anywhere in your program and at the end of the function it will simply jump back to where you were before you called the function. Now at a machine code level there is much more that goes on here. For example the assembly language instruction for calling a function is not jump it's actually call. And there are certain differences between how jump and call are different. And we'll get into that later on, but we don't need to get into that for this lesson. For the sake of this lesson, the explanation that I just gave you is, is enough. So we'll expand on this more as we proceed. Here I've written out a basic skeleton program. Now let's go ahead and put a printf statement here saying calling our function. And now let's go ahead and actually create our function. So when you create a function, first of all remember a function is a block of code with a name. We're going to call our function my function. And now anytime you have a function you need to specify whether or not it's going to have any parameters and what those parameters are. In this case we're only working with functions that don't have parameters so just the keyword void is enough. So you simply put void inside of the parentheses last we need to specify what if anything this function is going to return as a return value we'll go ahead and say int which means that this function is going to return an integer so let's do that we return one and now how do we actually call the function we just simply write in its name in the program where we want to call it we put parentheses and inside of those parentheses we put any arguments we're sending to the function if there are any. Now just so we know that this function actually executed let's go ahead and put a printf statement inside the function and there's one more thing that we need to do. At the very top of your program right after your include statements you need to define any functions that you're going to have. You put the return type, the name of the function, and its parameters and then a semicolon. That's it. That's how you define the function. This just says that we have a function called my function that we're going to be using later on. You don't actually write out the function there. You do that somewhere else like here underneath our main function. Now you do not put a function inside of another function. We would not write out our our function inside of here we do this after the closing brace of our main function so keep that in mind so let's go ahead and run this program and see what happens now as you see this is the printf statement calling our function and then inside the function is this printf statement so let's talk about exactly what's happening here in this basic example when we start running this program we're going to run this printf statement and then here we're going to jump to the block of code that is defined by these by this brace and this brace they're both highlighted in blue and then we're going to execute what is inside of here and then when we're all done we're going to return right back to where we were we're going to go to the very next line of code basically whatever is here is going to execute more specifically we return right to where the semicolon is so this is how we can create a function and execute it. Now you can create as many functions as you want. Remember a function has a name, we'll call this one another function. We're going to say it also has an integer return type, so we'll return an integer at the end. Doesn't matter what integer we return, we can return a 7, we can return a 0 as long as it's an integer. And then we can have another inside another function, another printf statement and we can call that function from anywhere we want. We can call it from here for example, another function. Now I still have to go up here and declare it, so I'll do that here. And now when we run this code, as soon as we finish executing the function called my function, we'll execute the function called another function and you'll see that happen. Take a look. Calling our function inside the function that that's here 
and then inside another function that's here so that's how you can create another function now the other thing is you can call this function from another function it doesn't have to be inside of the main function specifically so here we have a function called my function that will print f inside the function and then we'll jump over here execute this instruction and then finally jump back return and then finally jump back here so take a look and you'll notice the order in which it happens calling our function and then it jumps inside here inside the function and inside another function here's what you need to remember a function has a name a return type and arguments if there is no return type if you're not going to return anything that's fine what you do is rather than writing out the return type you write void and make sure that matches your your declaration up here it needs to also say void if you're going to have parameters you put them in the parentheses I'll show you how to do that later and if you don't have any parameters you just write void inside of the parentheses if you don't have a return value then you're not going to return an integer you're not going to write return for for example but you can write just return and if we run this code you'll see that it works just fine now I've explained to you that before you use the function you have to declare it at the top of your program and that's partially true in truth you can sometimes use a function that you haven't yet defined depending on the function and the correct terminology is to define the function up here and we'll discuss that more later for the purpose of this lesson you should consider that any function should be defined up here before it is called which means execute now very soon we will get into some of the more powerful uses of functions but this lesson is intended to only serve as an introduction to how to create and call your own custom built functions now if you feel that you understand the material well enough then you can go ahead and stop this video and continue to the next lesson however for those of you who are still confused I'm going to go ahead and write out the entire process I'm going to write a program I'm going to run it then I'm going to create a function and I'm going to talk through it so here we go so first of all let's create a function or let's create a, a program so this is just the main skeleton of of what I always do now if I want to call a function here called my function and I want it to do something like I wanted to run a printf statement or whatever then what I need to do is I need to create the function by giving it a return type that says what is going to be returned from the function when it's done then I have to place the name of the function and since it's not going to have any parameters I'm going to place void and now I have to define the block of code there's two ways I can do that I can either put the brace underneath like this or I can put it over here it's just a matter of preference since this function is going to be returning an integer then before I even write the function I should I should return an integer now that's it now the function is is built but the next thing I have to do is I need to define the function at the top of my program so I'm going to write basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to write exactly what I did here to define a function you need to specify its return type its name and any parameters and if there aren't any you're going to put just void and that's it that's all we need now I can put whatever I want in here and then whenever the main function gets to this line it's going to execute whatever is in here so if I put a few printf statements testing let's just do that a few times and there you go so what's going to happen here is when the main function which is itself the main program starts it's going to execute first it's going to go here which means it's going to jump to where the function is it's going to go here and it's going to print these c statements and then it's going to return to where it was which means it's going to be right at the end of the right after the semicolon whatever is here or whatever's on the next line is whatever's going to be executed next so 
That concludes the basic introduction to functions. We will get into it more later on. If you're still confused, don't worry. We're going to be using functions a lot and it will be made more clear as we go. And also you can feel free to ask any questions you'd like.